hey AP scientists, I'm Mr. Basin here. Hey, last week we had a quiz uh, on centripetal motion and I said I was gonna make videos and show you how to do them. And I showed you um, the first one and it took 24 minutes. Holy smokes, let's see if I can beat that time. So it was this quiz here and the second one had to do with how much you weigh if you're on Mount Rainier. And so you could compare to how much you weigh um, at sea level or um, Enum Claw is actually at 750 feet. So let's let's do this one, 750 feet above sea level. All right, so here we go. Now, this is basically a universal law of gravitation problem. And so let's write that down first. F of G equals big G, which is a fudge factor slash um, conversion. Um, and R squared is the radius squared or um, the distance between them. And so keep in mind, if you have objects like planets and maybe the moon, you don't measure from the surfaces, you measure from the center of mass which on a circular planet is usually the center of the planet. So that's, that's, a, that's what this R squared means, how, how far apart things are. So let's plug in some numbers and see what happens. We know how much we weigh here at sea level, I guess. And so let's plug in the numbers. Now, this is a complete significant digit problem because um, you know if we look at you on Earth, well, that's not the best circle, but if we look at you on Earth here and you have a certain weight there, and then if we put you up on top of Mount Rainier here, okay. Well, the bottom line is um, Mount Rainier might seem like a big mountain, but the Earth is actually about as round as a billiard ball. And so things that really seem high to you really aren't in the big scheme of things. So the, the difference between your weight here and here really isn't much. That's what we're going to calculate. Um, but it should be different because if we're measuring from the center of Earth from here to here, it is a greater distance if you're on top of Mount Rainier. So let's plug in some numbers. Now, this would be a great place for you to have something printed out. So if you don't have all these numbers memorized, these equations memorized, then it'd be a good idea to have this printed out so you don't have to go back and forth so much. It's so much nicer to um, just look at a sheet that's in front of you. So here we go. Let me do it. It's a different color. So big G, 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11th. And then we have uh, the mass of Earth, 5.974 times 10 to the 24th times 100, which is the other mass, which is you. By the way, you likely don't have a mass of 100 kilograms. That would be 221 pounds or so. At any rate, here's the hard part on this problem. The hard part is we have to add together the radius of the Earth plus how high you are. And so the radius of the Earth is 6.378 times 10 to the sixth meters plus 4392.5, which is how high you are on Mount Rainier. Notice I'm not putting units on any of this, um, which isn't the best idea, but if I put units on it, it gets really confusing. Now this lower number is gonna be squared. Keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go to a, I guess I will go I'll go to purple, it's about the same, but it's slightly different. So now in order to do the math in my calculator, I really like to do this math first and then write it down. Um, you guys can go ahead and say, well, I'll just, you know, I'll do parentheses and all that. Mm, but TI-84s and things have a way of having our order of operations problems. And so you watch the way I do this, and I would recommend you do it that way too, unless you are like a complete computer whiz, which 
not many are, and you're probably thinking you are because you're a teenager. And so just do what I tell you and do it this way. So 6.673 times 10 to minus 11 times 5.974 to the 24 equals times 100 equals divided by, C. no, I forgot to do it at the start. Okay, I'm actually gonna do parentheses. 6.378 in the interest of time, since last time, 4392, I did 25 minute thing. And Bajumba, there we go. And my answer after I do all the math is 978.6. Okay, this is gonna be a force. And so the answer will be in Newtons, so you could just write that. That would be a good way to fake it on a test. If you had written down all of the units, remember you need your units for big G, which are rather complicated. Let's go back and look at them real quick. They're down here, 6.67, well, four, they say times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed, kilograms in the bottom, second squared in the bottom. So it all cancels out and to give you newtons, 978.6 uh, newtons. Let's compare and then we're done. So if you look up here, 980.67, 980.67 newtons. And so the difference there, let's just look. This is about the same. So this is two newtons, two newtons, maybe. All right, two newton difference, all right? Newton's a quarter of a pound, so you're about a half a pound lighter. If you weigh 220 pounds, if you weigh 110 pounds, which might be more likely, then you would only weigh a quarter pound less. Quarter pound, half pound less, all right? So there you go. So sure enough, you do weigh less. By the time you get to the top of Mount Rainier with the backpack and everything, though, you weigh a whole bunch and you're so tired, you wouldn't even know, okay? And what's a half a pound anyway? That's eight ounces of water. You probably drank that much. Who knows? You're dehydrated. What the heck? There's a lot of things. The bottom line is because you're farther from the center of the earth, you weigh less. Okay. So I am going to quit there and I'm really curious to see what time I did this time. Talk to you later.